I really like GUIs. However, if your logic code is in the same thread as the GUI code, your calculations need to be pretty fast. Otherwise, you end up with a GUI that might feel sluggish or even lag occasionally. The solution is to move the calculations to a different thread. And today, I'll show you how to do that. By the way, what other things are you interested that you want to have explained for I am GUI? Let me know in the comments below. Here we have the typical GUI application. We draw something, and in this case, it's the framework that we draw, and we do have some buttons, and if we click those buttons, something might happen. So in this case, we do a long calculation. And you will see, if I click the button, the GUI starts not responding, and we have here a low peak in the calculation, or in the calculation of the frame rate, because the frame rate just goes down. And the more often I click the button, the worse it gets, uh, and the result is just incrementing every time I do this calculation. So you see, this is a behavior that you definitely want to avoid. You don't want drops in frame rate. And this calculation is rather short. If it might be even longer, then you have a GUI that is not responding at all. And let's look in the code and see what we can do to fix that. The code itself is rather straightforward. In our update loop, the only things that we basically do is we store away the frame times. So we calculate how long each frame takes. And other than that, we really only have a button. And as soon as I press that button, um, I calculate the result using this my calculation. And my calculation is doing nothing else than going through a volatile range of integers and just incrementing all over the place. And then just giving back some static result that I also increment. So this is just some, uh, some prototype of any long running calculation that you might have that is also returning an arbitrary value basically. And then everything else is just uh, plotting. So here we have the plots um, and here we are just plotting the frame number and the frame rate. So we, we see this graph that is slowly going through and, and seeing the frame rate. The main problem that we have here is that this my calculation, which runs for a long time, is in the same thread as the GUI code. So the update is the GUI code, and we see as soon as I press the button, the calculation is called in the same context, and now we need to move it to a different context. Fortunately, the standard library already has a good solution to that. It's called a standard async in combination with the future. And this is also what we now will implement. So we need to include the correct header, which is the future header. And the future basically holds a calculation that is running in a different thread and at some point will return a value. And now we need to basically defer the calculation here in a different thread. We do that by first creating a variable which will contain the future. So we create here a standard future. And we know the type that we expect is an integer. So we have create a standard future type integer, name it um, future result. And that's basically it. So we now have a last result and the future result. And now we need to use this calculation in the asynchronous way. So we will say the future result will be the standard ascent sync. And what we will do here is the launch policy. And we say we want to launch it directly. So um, you have basically the option to say you want to launch it in the future explicitly or directly as you create it. Um, and we want to do it directly. And we want to run my calculation. And that's basically already it. In this case, it's a little bit more complex than that because we're in, an, uh, in a class here and we don't have this um, exposed outside of the class. So we say it's uh, from app my calculation and we need to take the address. And since the async also needs to know the object on which we're calling this, we also need to add the, this pointer to the call. Now we have a future result. And we know that for the future result, this is already somehow running in the background. So the point here is we now need to check whether we have the future result. And this is whether it has already been created. The point here is that if you never have clicked the button, the future result is not there. And if it's not there, there's nothing that you can actually read out. And if you would try to read out, your application would crash. So in this case, we're just looking at the future result. 
if it's valid. And if it's valid, we know that the calculation has already been started, but we don't know if it has finished. So what we need to do is we need to wait for the execution or the, the return of this asynchronous type. So we again queue for the future result. And here we can say explicitly wait for. And this wait for is basically trying to get the value. And if it doesn't for a certain amount of time, it will just uh, return false. And at, if it returns false, then we fall through and execute the rest of the GUI code. And here we wait for instance for a millisecond. And if in one millisecond, the future is not ready, and this is duplicated by a standard future status ready. If it's ready, then we know we have a value to read out, and this is then what we do. We use here the last result. And we read out the future by using future result.get. And here we are basically through. So the main point is that we have used a different thread for the calculation. We check if the thread uh, is currently active and then we wait um, until the result is ready. And if the result is ready, we read it out and store it away. Now let's run this and see what happens. Here we again have the same graph of the frame rate. We see that the frame rate um, is somewhat sluggish because it's in a virtual machine. But anyways, if I now press the long calculation button, we see that the result here is incrementing, but for the frame rate, nothing is really changing. So we still have a responsive UI. We still have all of the draw calls that we need to have in the same manner, but we have the calculation which is running in the background in a different task. So here you can now put any calculation that you want as soon as you have a strict return type that you know, like the integer in our case, which is just returning here this result. This is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like and as always, enjoy coding.